In 2016, there was a prophecy that a chosen director would do the impossible. He would adapt one of science fiction's greatest classics and bring cinema its next Lord of the Rings or Star Wars. Well, that prophecy has finally come true. Well, halfway true. The movie only adapts the first section of the novel and leaves the rest to cryptic visions Paul has of a sequel that need to be explained. Let's go. Before George Lucas introduced us to concepts like Jedi, the Force, and lightsabers in 1977's Star Wars, author Frank Herbert introduced us to the mysterious order known as the Bene Gesserit. This all-female sort of religious order manipulates the political affairs of the galaxy both subtly and literally utilizing a power known as the voice. Come here, kneel. Their ultimate end is to create a mythic Chosen One, and then fulfill their own prophecy by bringing the Chosen One into existence. That messiah is known as the Kwisax Haderach. Whether he likes it or not, it's pretty clear from the get-go that our hero Paul Atreides has been engineered by his mother Lady Jessica to become the legend. In order to determine whether or not Paul could be this destined hero, he's asked whether or not he has dreams that end up coming to pass. Initially, these dreams center on a mysterious woman with blue eyes on a mysterious planet that Paul doesn't recognize. While many consider Paul to be a mythical being, his creation was actually very deliberate. The Bene Gesserit has the ability to control whether they give birth to a boy or a girl, though they are told to only breed girls. Lady Jessica, yeah, she threw caution to the wind and gave birth to a boy, hoping that her genetic predisposition towards prescience and Duke Leto's Atreides' noble bloodline would do the trick. Well, big points to Jessica, because the day Paul steps foot on Arrakis, all of the Fremen freak out and assume that Paul is the one that they've been waiting for. And if he thought that he had trouble with weird dreams before, that is nothing compared to what the spice gives him. If the movie did not make it clear, Spice is a big deal in the Dune universe for many different reasons. Spice melange is a naturally occurring substance that's created exclusively on Arrakis. Not to get too much into the pseudoscience of Dune, but Spice is essential in calculating the folding of space-time utilizing something known as the Holtzman effect. Ingesting Spice leads to all sorts of prescient abilities that are necessary to pull this off. As far as Paul goes, pretty much the second that he comes into contact with Spice, he starts having extreme visions. Like, before Arrakis, he had a vision of Duncan Idaho falling in battle, but that was peanuts compared to his Spice visions. It's also hilariously wrong when Idaho tells Paul that everything important happens when you're awake. Paul's the Spice visions vary wildly from the instantly clear to the incredibly vague. On the clear side, Paul is able to see that his fight with Jameis is going to go before it even happens. He knows that if he does not use lethal force, he will be slain and all is lost. As far as Paul's vague vision goes, these are often terrifying predictions of the future. Back with the reverend mother he sees burning palm trees, a bloody Chris knife, and a body set aflame. By the end of the first movie, it's clear that these visions are predictions of House Atreides falling to the Harkonnens. When he and his mother have a camp out on Arrakis, his visions of the future become a lot more intense. By that, I mean that he basically pulls a Doctor Strange in Infinity War and watches the plot of the next movie before this one has even played out. When Warner Brothers announced that a Dune sequel was actually going to happen, I let out a big sigh of relief, and that's because Dune Part 1 invests heavily in the sequel. The biggest complaint about this film that I've seen is that the entire movie is just a setup for the rest of the story to go down. This was a big risk, considering the fact that Part 2 was not a sure thing when they were filming. We almost had the sci-fi equivalent of the Fellowship of the Ring ending without the Two Towers or Return of the King to finish the tale. Luckily, enough of you went to see it in theaters or watched it on HBO Max to get a sequel, so thanks guys. It was a team effort. I'm uh, now about to spoil the plot of that sequel that you helped make possible, so fair warning. His dreams about Chaney proved to be prophetic about their relationship. The sequel will likely pick up with Paul's love for her well underway. They even have a kid. Jessica also undergoes a transformation to gain more power, and has Leto's second kid, proving Paul right again. Of course, that's nothing compared to his more brutal dreams. 
So, you know when Paul's freaking out on Spice and starts screaming about a war that will happen in his name? Yeah, that goes down. Paul accepts that he was born to become the Chosen One and leads the Fremen in a vicious conquest of Arrakis. Eventually, they overthrow the Harkonnens and Paul holds the Spice production hostage. The Emperor abdicates his throne and Paul becomes the Emperor. This is a bit of a mixed blessing though, because Paul has unleashed the fury of Arrakis and that is not a genie that is so easily put back in the bottle. I am having a vision right now and it's of me watching the extended cuts of these movies for years to come. Don't even need Spice to see that one.